السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سورة آل عمران the third surah in the order of the Quran from the beginning the second longest surah in the Quran such a blessed surah that is important for us to uh, get the lessons from it it's a surah that would come in the day of judgment to those who used to recite it and memorize it and act according to it it will come and defend its owner the one that used to recite the surah and memorize it and so on and would intercede for such a person as the Prophet ﷺ said so uh, this is not something to be belittled whatsoever and we reached the last uh, two verses in the surah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give us the blessings and the reward of reciting and pondering and to give us the means and the guidance to be able to implement it in our life and to spread the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to teach others uh, and this is something basically that is the goal for the Muslim whenever we recite the Quran to ponder over its meanings. So let's first talk about the last two verses of Surah Al Imran and to uh, conclude with uh, the meanings or some of the meanings that we learned throughout the Surah before we can go to uh, Surah Al Nisa, which is the next one in order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 199. وَإِنَّ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَمَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ خَاشِعِينَ لِلَّهِ لَا يَشْتَرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ Which means, and indeed, among the people of the scripture, are those who believe in Allah and what was revealed to you and what was revealed to them. Being humbly submissive to Allah, they do not exchange the verses of Allah for a small price. Those will have their reward with their Lord. Indeed, Allah is swift in account. This ayah about the people of the book, the people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, but mainly a group of them, those who are believers and that came after the verses before that that talks about the believers and the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers and the people of understanding so these are also part of the people of understanding these are the pa part of the people of the believers since surah al-imran there is a big portion of the surah that talks about the people of the book uh, with wafd and ajran those who came to the prophet sallallahu and the prophet sallallahu called them to islam and the verses that talks about calling them to the truth and refuting their false beliefs and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse before last in the surah uh, stating the fact that some of them, a group of them, they are uh, among the believers, whether they were oppressed by their people, they could not openly uh, show their faith and they did not have means to migrate or to go to the believers or those who believed and they become among the believers and so on so uh, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that wa inna min ahl kitab from among the people of the book the people of the book those who had the scripture before lamay yu'minu billah among them those who believe in Allah believe in Allah right is not to believe in the existence of Allah only it's not to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the sustainer and the provider alone only. It's this and 
to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. That's the message of all the messengers of Allah. Because among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and so on. But they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worship, they worship Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary, for example. Or they disbelieve in messengers of Allah, like disbelieving in Jesus. Uh, like among the Jews, those who would disbelieve in Jesus alayhi salam or disbelieve in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And the same thing for the Christians, those who would disbelieve in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So for someone to be a believer, the believer has to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the creator, the sustainer, the provider, and he's the only one worthy of worship. To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes, and to follow all the messengers, to believe in all the messengers of Allah, and not to disbelieve in any of them, and to follow the last and final messenger to all mankind, and that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the verse is referring to those who embraced Islam, those who followed the Prophet alayhi that among them those who لَمَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ those who would believe in Allah, and this is what believing in Allah means, and that's why we have to have the proper knowledge and the proper understanding of what does it mean to say that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ And they believe in what has been brought down to you, إِلَيْكُمْ And what is, it? What is this? Is the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, They believe in the Qur'an as the final revelation from Allah. And they uh, follow that. It's not just a matter of belief in their hearts, uh, but they also humble themselves and they follow the truth. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And what has been brought down to them before the Prophet Sallallahu the Torah, the Injil, and so on. خَاشِعِينَ لِلَّهِ They humble themselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, humbly submissive to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, the word خَاشِعِينَ لِلَّهِ Humbling themselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that the person would look in a certain way. Some people think that humbleness is to look humble. Uh, humbleness has nothing to do with how you physically look. Humbleness or khushu' is something that is in the heart. It shows on the outside appearance, but not necessarily as a show of humbleness. For example, if someone, someone has khushu' in the salah, does that mean that the person who stands in the salah with uh, the eyes closed or looks like he's in state of khushu'? This has nothing to do with khushu'. Khushu' or humbleness, it's in the heart. That means the person is humble, the person is in state of submission, the person is focused, concentrated on what is being said, and as a result of that, the person would follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ physically. So khashi'ina lillah, that means they submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling themselves to the truth. They don't reject it out of arrogance. They humble themselves, they submit themselves, to the book of Allah, to the way of the Prophet والسلام, and they follow. Because one, the, uh, one of the reasons, one of the most important reasons for many of them to reject the faith and to disbelieve in the Prophet وسلم, is because they didn't want to lose their status among their people. They didn't want to humble themselves to the final revelation from Allah. Or maybe because the Prophet ﷺ is from a different race than their race. Or because of their status among the people, they have some form of authority over them. And they have followers and masses and so on. So out of the fear that the masses would reject them, as Heraclius did, he knew the truth, but he was uh, afraid of his people. And this is also uh, the issue of the forefathers, the religion of the forefathers that is becomes a big fitna, tribulation, trial for the person, not to leave the religion of the forefathers. So uh, many reasons would divert them from the truth. But this group of people from among the people of the book, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them, they submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, followed the way of the Prophet والسلام, like Abdullah ibn Salam and others. خَاشِعِينَ لِلَّهِ Humbling themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why for us to, since we're supposed to reflect upon these verses, for us to make khushu' to have the khushu' and the humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it is not just something that shows in the time that we're making salah, it's a way of life. It's at all times. 
that we're always in that state of khushu' we're waiting to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and we submit ourselves we don't put forward any of our ideas or intellects or anything or desires we put forward always the orders of Allah and we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbly so as a result of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Quran khashi'ina lillah la yashtaruna bi ayati Allah thamanan qalila which means that they do not exchange the verses of Allah for a small price la yashtaruna bi ayati Allah thamanan qalila another characteristics of the people of the book those the type of them the group of them those who embrace the truth and this is something that has been mentioned before in the verse number 187 in the same surah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the people of the book from the knowledgeable ones that they would make it clear to the people and they would not conceal it but what happened to the other group of them the disbelievers فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ وَاشْتَرَوْ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 187 that they uh, put it behind their backs and وَاشْتَرَوْ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا the same thing they purchased by or exchanged by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some small price these are the evil ones these are the disbelievers among them but the believers among them those who followed the Prophet وسلم, and they became Muslims they refused to do that they refused to exchange with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some small price and when we talked about it before any price for that exchange is a small price anything that uh, is in return of one's religion in return of concealing the truth it's considered to be a small price even if it's the whole world and whatever it contains so it doesn't mean that they just uh, did that for a, a really physically small price no the whole world and whatever it contains is a small price why because that would lead them to be disbelievers when they conceal the truth and they would uh, compromise their deen and not showing the truth because they knew that the Prophet Sallallahu was mentioned in their books and they were waiting for him and to convey this message to their people was something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took the covenant from them so the believers among them they submitted themselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they did not purchase or did not exchange the ayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with this worldly gain even if it's the whole world and whatever it contains because it's all thamanan qalila a small price so these believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving them the glad tidings because they are part of the believers that are mentioned previously which means those will have the reward with the Lord they will have the rewards with the Lord as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned before to the believers وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِلْأَبْرَارِ What with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better for the abrar, for the righteous ones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about the people of the book, those who believed in the Prophet sallallahu and followed him, that also they have their reward uh, by the Lord, عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ And whenever something is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing the like of it. And this is the glad tidings for them that if they were threatened during their life if they were faced by some form of humiliation or loss of status or loss of authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward them better than this and give them the reward from him subhanahu wa ta'ala lahum ajruhum inda rabbihim inna Allah sari'u al-hisab that indeed Allah is swift in account the account is very swift and very quick and very uh, precise because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a way also for them to have the comfort that whatever hardship they went through the matter will be soon over because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in account before they know it the account will be there and they will be all held accountable for their actions so there is no need to panic there's no need to compromise and it's also a reminder for each and every one of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sari'u al-hisab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in an account that means do not think that the life that we live in is so long that we can um, maybe fix things 
or we'll wait to a certain age where we can change the way that we do things or people waiting for uh, to go for hajj for example to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or waiting to reach a certain age or to finish building this or this degree or that way of life whatever there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in account that means people should not be uh, comfortable in that case if they are committing sins and state of forgetfulness because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the most swift in account as it's mentioned in the verse to comfort the people of the book so this verse number 199 the one before last in surat al imran although it specifically talks about the people of the book but it's not in general to all the people of the book it talks about those who believed whether it's like the najashi at the time of the prophet sallam uh, the king of Abyssinia and uh, those who followed and uh, and some of them they would uh, they would be oppressed so they would secretly follow and embrace the deen of Islam so this is a group that belongs to the believers that are part of the believers right and this is what is meant by the verse not the people of the book in large and uh, the, the verse clearly explained their characteristics and they have the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the books that were revealed because if someone even believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way and do not associate partners with Allah but they don't believe in what has been brought down to the Prophet وسلم, they're not believers, they're disbelievers unless they believe in all the books of Allah unless they believe in all the messengers of Allah unless they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone unless they follow the way of the Prophet وسلم, because he's the final messenger then they are believers and that's why the word khashi'ina lillah submissive uh, they submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't exchange their deen their truth with a small price which is this whole world and whatever it contains they would get the best rewards and have the the strong patience because the matter is so close and the account from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so swift we continue inshallah ta'ala with the last verse of surah al imran and the summary of the surah right after the break so stay with us inshallah Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. With the last verse of Surah Al Imran, verse number 200, the Surah is 200 verses. Uh, this last verse is such a significant ayah verse that it's a call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the believers, including the ones that are just mentioned in the previous verse, those who were among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, and then they embraced Islam, and they followed the Prophet والسلام, whether they are oppressed uh, among their people or not, the call to all the believers. And the call that we would hear in this last verse, basically give them the steadfastness based on what has been mentioned throughout the whole entire surah. The whole entire surah is with incidences and meanings and lessons and so on. Then as if it's summed up in this call. This is now the practical means of benefiting what has been mentioned in the surah in very precise words. And that's the blessings. This is the miracle of the Quran that give you very precise instructions so that the believers are focused and they understand with details and with general statements, with very precise wordings of things so that they hold fast to the truth and they are never confused. So uh, this call, beautiful call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihoon which means, oh you have believed, persevere and endure and remain stationed and fear Allah that you may be successful. The ayah says with لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be successful, so that you are successful. And what's before that, this is the criteria for success. And as if the surah is uh, enticing the ummah of the Prophet wasallam, that this is the means of success. If you want to be superior, if you want to be successful, then you have to learn from the mistakes, from the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. You have to follow what's mentioned in the surah. 
So what are the means of success? This is what the verse is saying. Ya ayyuhal amanu. So the call is to the believers. And as we said that before many, many times, whenever this call comes, that means we have a job to do. Quran is something that we interact with. It's not just a verse to be recited and we seek some blessings in the recitation and that's it. This is something that we have to interact with. We have to have certain meanings implemented in our hearts and our tongues and our bodies and so on. So, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, as we said many times before, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, if you hear it, then give it your ears, give it your attention. Because what comes after it, it's either an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're ordered to do, or something that you are forbidden from doing. And for the believers, they have nothing but to listen and to obey. And that's why the call is to the believers. That means if they are believers, they have nothing but to submit themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to implement it and to apply it fully without hesitation whatsoever, with the good expectations that this is what is good for them in this life and in the hereafter. So if you are believers, then this is to be applied. This is how the effect of the Iman, the effect of belief, that should be in the hearts and the lives of the believers. Not that they read it and recite it and they don't do anything about it. That means there is deficiency in their belief, their weakness in their belief. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and to make us among those who have strong Iman, strong belief. That whenever we hear that call, we submit ourselves totally. We get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And then we seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to apply the order in the most perfect way and to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we're always going to fall into some shortcomings. This is how the nature of the human beings are. That's why fulfilling the orders with constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So what is the first order after this call? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, isbiru. Isbiru means, this is an order, be patient be uh, persevere and endure actually is biru is patience and uh, be strong in your patience and patience has been mentioned in many parts of the surah and throughout the whole entire quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers to be patient and when we said before that patience means that you know for sure that this is the order of allah and you will be faced with all means of temptations, pressures, enmity, fitan, tribulations because of that order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're supposed to hold fast to and apply in your life. So you will be faced with so many different things to divert you from applying that order. So if a person is not patient, he would follow the temptations. He would surrender to the uh, pressure from others, from the threatening of others from calamities, whatever there is. But if there is patience, why patience? Because of what's coming ahead. Because this is the order of Allah. And this is the nature of life that you will be faced with all kinds of things to divert you from the truth. But be patient because it's easy by the will of Allah and then eventually, if you are patient, you would receive the ultimate reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have defeated your enemies and you are successful by being a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all what is mentioned in the surah, whether it's the battles that the companions radiallahu anhum went through, and the battle of Uhud and the lessons learned there and so on, that needs patience. It needs for the believers to be patient. Just apply the orders of Allah and be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory, will make you victorious, will give you superiority, will in this life and hereafter and so on. So isbiru is such an important uh, way of life. Half of the religion is being patient, being patient to apply the orders of Allah, and there are many of them. It is of belief, establishing the salah, paying the zakah, fasting, giving charity, speaking the truth, uh, enjoying good and forbidding evil, fighting for the sake of Allah, all kinds of things. The whole entire life is to fulfill the orders of Allah, to be patient, to stay away from what is, what is haram. And what is haram is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu It's way of life, focused, concerned. Deen is not just some uh, rituals that people do. It's a, it's a way of life. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from doing, even if it's not according to our desires, we would be patient. We would leave it for the sake of Allah with the good expectations and that's what 
helps the person to be patient, the good expectations that it's best for us, that if we're not patient, it's harmful for us, that the everlasting life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers is for those who are patient. They apply the orders of Allah and from that, it shows the importance of knowledge because for someone that a person is not used to do one thing or the other, he has to make sure that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And to be patient with the calamities, with the things that afflict us, fit and tribulations, there are so many of them, to be patient with that. And never give up and know for sure that the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. And understand the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth and that you have to be tested. So uh, being patient with the calamities, whether it's on the ummah or individually, and that is meant by the wisdom of Allah because nothing happens except by the wisdom of Allah. It's meant to be this way for a reason. So isbiru, right? And the implications of this. Wasabiru. Sabiru has the same root meaning to it. And as you see in the translation, and endure, right? But the word sabiru is sabr also, patience, but a specific or a special type of sabr, special type of patience. And that is the patience facing another side, the enemy that has also patience. So you have two groups of people, two people. One is an enemy of another. The one that has more patience will prevail, will win, will be successful. And the one that has less patience will be defeated. So it's not enough to have patience. You have to have more patient, patience than your enemy. And that is in the battlefield. And that's when the believers, they face their enemies, whether it's in the physically in the battlefield or in this world, in their da'wah, in their uh, spreading the truth, in uh, facing uh, if they are being oppressed or whatever there is, have more patience than your enemies. Sometimes the enemies of the deen of al-Islam, they show so much patience and they keep on working and working and defeated and they come back and never give up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the believers, you are in the truth. Sabiru, be patient more than those who have patience from among your enemies so that the defeat will happen to them. And this is the nature of the struggle, any struggle. This is the benefit of this uh, verse. Any struggle, part of this nature of any struggle, that the ones that is uh, successful in any struggle are the ones that have more patience than the other side. And again, the example that we can clearly see, uh, people go fight in the battlefield. You have uh, two armies. The one that has more patience, the one that would defeat their enemy. Even if there is some immediate loss to them, but they are patient and they endure the patience. And they have some more struggle and more patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them victory if they are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And again, in matters of da'wah and all kinds of things. So, isbiru wa sabiru. Not just being patient as we heard with the types of patience, but to uh, oppose those who are patient from among your enemies, to oppose them with stronger patience and more patience to defeat them. وَرَابِطُوا Rabitu means remain stationed. Remain stationed in what? Al-ribat is one of the acts of worship. To remain stationed, to guard the frontiers of the Muslims. It has more than one meaning to it. The apparent meaning or the first meaning that should come into one's mind is when a person is stationed to guard the frontiers of the Muslims. Someone that is by the borders, for example, and guarding the, the, the land from the enemies to come. This is an act of worship. Why? Because it's individuals, but they're doing something and subjecting themselves to harm ways. For what reason? To protect the rest of the ummah. Right, so they are they receive great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are many a hadith that talks about the virtues of those who are in ribat, in uh, being stationed and protecting and guarding the frontiers of the Muslims. This is physically, and also for those who have uh, not got the means to do this, and, and that's why if a person has the means, they should be haste in doing so. And the early generations of Islam they used to compete with one another to be in state of revolt, to be in state of remain stationed. And that's why they would, uh, it's an easy way to gain rewards, uh, whether they would go fight for the sake of Allah or they would go and live for some time in the places where uh, follows the enemies right away. Uh, 
and that's why some of the cities you would read in the books that they would call it the frontiers for example uh, the city of Alexandria in Egypt for example this is a city where uh, the, some other scholars will even come because it's an easy way of guarding the frontiers of the Muslims the enemies they sometimes will come from the north from that city through that city so they would go and live there for some time and guard the frontiers of the Muslims because they would be the first to be hit or to defend and so on and many cities like this uh, so this is the physical uh, revolt or to remain stationed the other meanings of it too it's a way of life Believers should be always stationed, guarding the frontiers of the Muslims, physically and non-physically. Non-physically like guarding the Ummah from the attack of its enemies. They spread rumors, they spread doubts. So the people of knowledge would uh, defend the deen of Allah. They are remained stationed and they're protecting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the religion by spreading the truth and refuting the calls of the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a form of ribat as the ulama they say. The Prophet والسلام, said in the authentic hadith another form of ribat. Uh, he said والسلام, that from this is is al wudu'i al makari when he uh, asked the, the companions radiallahu anhum uh, about uh, should I inform you of something that would elevate your levels and expiate your sins he said to make the wudu at times of dislike in the early morning at the time of cold weather whatever there is and to walk a lot to have many footsteps going to the masajid going to the houses of Allah for salah to go for every salah and the life of a Muslim going to the masjid going back and forth all day for salatul fajr for salatul dhuhr salatul asr Salatul Maghrib, Salatul Isha, Kathratul Khuta ila al Masajid, to go always constantly to the houses of Allah. When Tidaru Salati Vada Salah, and to wait, when Tidar, to remain stationed, to remain or to wait for the Salah after a Salah. You finished with one Salah, to wait for the next Salah. The Prophet said, Fadali Kumur Ribat, Fadali Kumur Ribat. This is the Ribat. This is one of the forms of Ribat to remain stationed, waiting for uh, the next salah. Wattaqullah and fear Allah. Be dutiful to Allah. It's like uh, a general statement, general order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all that is mentioned before comes under the meaning of the taqwa. To be obedient to Allah, to be dutiful to Allah. And more extra meaning by applying the orders of Allah. General, everything in part of the deen of Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ so that you are successful. These are the criteria, these are the means to be successful. And this is the last verse in Surah Al Imran with this comprehensive orders, which is a way of life in very short statement that sums up basically the meanings that are mentioned in the Surah. Uh, inshallah, after the break, we'll talk more about this verse and about the Surah, Surah Al Imran, that we just finished uh, in, in conclusion, inshallah. Ta'ala. So stay with us. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. After discussing the surah and the tafsir of surah Al Imran, and with the last call in the surah to the believers to endure patience and to uh, have the patience facing their enemies and to have a ribat, to remain stationed and on their guard uh, with regards to the plots of their enemies, uh, never to be deceived because they will try to deceive you. So protect yourself with iman, with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, with uh, guarding your salah and so on and so forth. And to fear Allah and to be dutiful to Allah, so that you are successful. And as if this is the goal of uh, the surah and the whole entire Quran is for the believers to be successful. Uh, to have the falah that we hear five times a day, Hayya al falah, come to your success. Uh, success is to be uh, successful in this life and in the hereafter, not just in one and not the other. So, by applying what we heard in the surah, and of course, this is in many episodes, it's important for us to have the detailed and the time 
that we spend to ponder over every verse and to see what's the what needs to be learned and we apply that in our life. See, the, the deen of Islam changes the life of the believers one verse after another. It's not a switch that a person would press. It's not just one uh, lecture and that's it uh, for the rest of one's life. It's an upbringing. It's, it's something that the Prophet ﷺ did with the companions عنهم, And as we heard before that they used to take 10 verses at a time. And they would learn them, recite them, and they would uh, get to know the rulings of them, and they would apply it, and then they would go to the next verses. So applying the Qur'an, this is something that is, uh, we are in so much in need of this, and this is what we lack as, as many Muslims today. We just uh, read the Qur'an maybe, ponder over sometimes its verses, but where is the implications? Where is the actions in our life and our relationships and the whole Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu and that's what the criteria, if you want to see the status of the Ummah of the Muslims, because uh, Muslims are Muslims everywhere, look at the Qur'an in their life. Uh, where is the Qur'an in their life? If it's uh, leading their life, that means they are very close to be superior. But if not, that means they would continue to be humiliated. So this is the book that we need to hold fast to, and with it is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, because of the short period of time that we have in this episode, but uh, very quickly, some of the things that we heard throughout the entire surah of Surah Al-Imran that is basically the, the purpose of the surah. The last one, as we said, and this is sums up everything else, is to be successful. How? By obeying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the surah started with the Qur'an. This is the means of Al-Falah. The first uh, part of the surah talks about the Qur'an and uh, the importance of it and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the different types of the verses of the Qur'an, the muhkam and the mutashabih, the clear verses and the ones that might not be very clear to many. And how the, to deal with it is to refer what is not clear to what is clear. But the people of hypocrisy, they would always talk about what is not clear. And how people are different when it comes to their understanding. Uh, and the, the, the virtues of the deen of Islam in the beginning of the surah talks about how the religion of Islam is so virtuous. It's the only truth in the deen عند الله Islam. Indeed, the religion accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only uh, accepted religion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the religion of Islam. And whoever takes other than the religion of Islam as a religion, it would not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, whatsoever, so people need to embrace the religion of Islam. They need to know about the deen of Islam. And uh, how that when the religion of Islam prevails, then and when the message reach everyone, then it's not acceptable for them but to submit themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talked about the Torah, the Injil, the books, the previous books that was revealed before the Quran, and how these are books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to believe in them. And the people of knowledge at their time, they were entrusted by these books to convey it to the people and to uh, convey the message to them that whenever the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is to be sent, that people need to follow him and to submit themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so it is not permissible for people to disbelieve in the previous books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And uh, also the surah talks about, which is also the main theme of the surah, is about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refuting the deviations of those who took partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they took sons besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the Christians did, or the idol worshippers and so on, and then their affairs will vanish and will disappear and they will be defeated one day. That's why they should return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Him alone and worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be deceived, and not for the believers to be deceived by the disbelievers, and to hold fast to the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers, and this is better for them. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Isa alayhi salam, and the story of Isa alayhi salam, and how he was praised, and his family were praised. And the miraculous, uh, and the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided Isa alayhi salam when, in his birth, and uh, the things that he did, and with all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuting the call of those who claim that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of Mary, is God himself or the son of God. And the refute of the claims that the people of Najran, the delegation that came to the Prophet sallallahu uh, these things that they had and opposing that with the Tawheed, 
with the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took upon all the messengers of Allah that they would worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that they all believe in the final and the seal of all the messengers of Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from all the messengers of Allah that he made the Kaaba, the first house of worship and he brought back the people to the Kaaba to be the place of worship where they turn to in the Qibla and so on and also in the, in the surah exposing the deviations of Bani Israel, the Jews and uh, what they, uh, their false claims and what they have concealed of the truth and they made the religion only to the elite among them or the scholars among them and they deceived their people by concealing the truth and not conveying the message especially about the Prophet Also the surah talked about the believers, the Muslims and reminding them of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them by the deen of Islam ordering them to be united to be united on the truth do not uh, divert yourself do not disunite but unite yourself not on some uh, imaginary things or on some falsehood but to unite yourself on the truth on the Quran and the way of the Prophet and reminding them of their days of jahiliyyah of ignorance when they were disunited and fighting with one another and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> brought this mercy in their hearts and the love towards one another and uh, to uh, also uh, make them warned of the enmity of the people of the book and the idol worshippers uh, and to make it easy for them that they would come against you they would try to fight you they would try to take the uh, take you away from the truth and divert you and deviate you that means you have to be careful not to be deceived by them and to the surah belittled the plots of the disbelievers if it's opposed by the believers being strong and steadfast on the truth they would never harm you whatsoever and uh, talked also about the those hypocrites those who showed Islam and concealed kufr and to separate between the truth and falsehood and of course this is in the uh, you know talked about the battle of Uhud and what the hypocrites did and how disobeying one order of the Prophet ﷺ was a reason for some defeat and the martyrdom of 70 of the companions عنهم, and the Prophet ﷺ was wounded all of this because of just one order of the Prophet ﷺ that they disobeyed him in because of the desire of this world that led them to this what what's a great lesson to be learned that we as Muslims we need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to learn from our mistakes and they are still the best generation ever brought to mankind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them and praised them was pleased with them because they immediately repented and changed and submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and that's why to be patient in facing the calamities and the different types of harms and, and that's why reminding them of the battle of Uhud and how they uh, their life was for the sake of Allah they were not after some uh, special interest or some uh, individual benefits or booties or the war or anything of that but it's the words of Allah to be superior and this is the life of the believers their goal is to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior even if they would go through hardship and difficulties and, and so on so the battle of Uhud is mentioned many verses about the battle of Uhud and the lessons to be learned and the battle of Badr also was mentioned uh, like that to, to remind them of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the surah talked about the martyrs among the Muslims those who people might think that they are dead but in reality they are not they are alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have a more perfect life and that uh, those who would think that if they defend the deen of Allah if they are steadfast on the deen of Allah and obey the orders of Allah harm would afflict them then uh, the glad tidings and the good news came to them from the unseen, from those who were martyred and that they would wish to come back to this, earl, to this world for no reason but to fight again and to die again for the sake of Allah not for the worldly gain after they received the honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ordering the believers to, uh, to do righteous and virtuous deeds by giving from their wealth and spending from their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing righteous good deeds and to stay away from greediness to stay away from being greedy as we heard towards the end of the surah 
and uh, never think that greediness would uh, bring you any benefit. But instead, when you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace it by something better. And to stay away from riya or showing off, but instead to be sincere and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, we heard the last 10 verses of uh, Surah Al Imran and how to ponder over the uh, dominion of the heavens and the earth and how to be in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, how to correct our own understanding and vision of things so that we're not deceived like many people on the face of earth are deceived. Not to be deceived by being in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran who are the people of understanding, those who are in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of their states and they ponder over and reflect upon the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learned how to make the best dua and what is the most concern that we should have on the face of earth if we are people of understanding. If we are people of understanding, then we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire and we are truthful in this and we take the means to protect us from the hellfire. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to, uh, to forgive our sins after responding to the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to expiate our sins and to be among the righteous in this life and to die among them and to have the best ending and to always hope for the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the criteria of the people of understanding how they sacrificed and migrated for the sake of Allah and were evicted from their homes and they were harmed for the sake of Allah and fought and killed for the sake of Allah. All of these are means of expiations of one's sins and to enter and to be admitted into the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then never be deceived by the ways of the disbelievers. Be steadfast and hold fast to the truth and the last call as we heard in the last segment to be patient and to be patient facing your enemies to have more patient than them by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have the fear of Allah, the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you are successful. This is in uh, nutshell the, the summary of the surah for us to be successful. So this is what we need to work on to implement this in our life and for the Quran to be benefiting to us we need to repeat this over and over again. That's why we recite it over and over again to implement this in our life and to check with ourselves where are the deficiencies and how can we see things in the proper way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this accepted uh, and to uh, make us benefit from the Quran and to give us the reward of everything that we heard and we listened to and to make us spread the truth and to spread the knowledge. And inshallah ta'ala we continue next time with uh, the fourth surah uh, in the order of the surahs in the Quran, surah al-Nisa or women. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to finish the Quran and to implement the Quran in our life. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh wa muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Quran ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا